welcome dear students today we are going to discuss the key topic that is chemical composition and uh, properties of membrane components fluid mosaic model of membrane structure membrane fluidity experimental demonstration of membrane fluidity and membrane asymmetry the main objectives of today's lecture are to have general idea about chemical composition and uh, properties of membrane components to discuss fluid mosaic model of membrane structure to discuss membrane fluidity to discuss experimental demonstration of membrane fluidity to get idea about importance and control of membrane fluidity to get an idea about membrane asymmetry dear students let us first of all discuss about chemical composition and properties of membrane components the principal components of the plasma membrane are lipids proteins and carbohydrates the proportion of proteins lipids and carbohydrates in the plasma membrane vary between different types of cells for a typical human cell however proteins accounts for about 50% of the composition by mass lipids account for about 40% and the remaining 10% comes from the carbohydrates lipids membranes contain a wide and diversity of lipids all of which are amphipathic that's they contain both hydrophilic and hydrophobic regions there are three main types of membrane lipids phosphoglycerides sphingolipids and cholesterol phosphoglycerides most membrane lipids contain a phosphate group which makes them phospholipids because most membrane phospholipids are built on a glycerol backbone they are called phosphoglycerides membrane glycerides are diglycerides only two of the hydroxyl groups of the glycerol are esterified to fatty acids the third is esterified to a hydrophilic phosphate group without any additional substitutions beyond the phosphate and the two fatty acyl chains the molecule is called phosphatidic acid which is virtually absent in most membranes instead membrane phosphoglycerides have an additional group linked to the phosphate most commonly either choline forming phosphatidyl choline ethanol amine forming phosphatidyl ethanol amine serine forming phosphatidyl serine or ionostol forming phosphatidyl ionostol each of the groups is small and hydrophilic and together with the negatively charged phosphate to which it's attached forms a highly water soluble domain at one end of the molecule called the head group sphingolipids a less abundant class of membrane lipids called sphingolipids are derivatives of sphingosine an amino alcohol that contains a long hydrocarbon chain sphingolipids consists of sphingosine linked to fatty acid by its amino group this molecule is a ceramide the various sphingosine based lipids have additional groups esterified to the terminal alcohol of the sphingosine moiety if the substitution is phosphorylcholine the molecule is sphingomyelin which is the only phospholipid of the membrane that's not built with a glycerol backbone if the substitution is carbohydrate the molecule is a glycolipid if the carbohydrate is a simple sugar the glycolipid is called a cerebroside if it is a small cluster of sugars the glycolipid is called a gangliosside since all the sphingolipids have two long hydrophobic hydrocarbon chains at one end and a hydrophilic region at the another end they are also amphipathic and basically similar in overall structure to the phosphoglycerides glycolipids are interesting membrane components the third one cholesterol another lipid component of certain membranes is the sterol cholesterol which in certain animal cells may constitute up to 50% of the lipid molecules in the plasma membrane cholesterol is absent from the plasma membranes of most plant and all bacterial cells cholesterol molecules are oriented with their small hydrophilic hydroxyl group towards the membrane surface and the remainder of the molecule embedded in the lipid bilayer the hydrophobic rings of the cholesterol molecule are flat and rigid 
and they interfere with the movements of the fatty acid tails of the phospholipids. Now second membrane proteins. Membrane proteins can be grouped into three distinct classes distinguished by the intimacy of their relationship to the lipid bilayer. Integral proteins penetrate the lipid bilayer. Integral proteins are transmembrane proteins that is they pass entirely through the lipid bilayer and thus have domains that protrude from both the extracellular and cytoplasmic sides of a membrane. Some integral proteins have only one membrane spanning segment whereas others are multi spanning. Genome sequencing studies suggest that the integral membrane proteins constitute 20 to 30 percent of all encoded proteins. Most integral proteins function in the following capacities as receptors that bind specific substances at the membrane surface as channels or transporters involved in the movement of ions and solutes across the membrane or as agents that transfer electrons during the process of photosynthesis and respiration. Like the phospholipids of the bilayer, integral membrane proteins are also empipathic having both hydrophilic and hydrophobic portions. Those portions of an integral membrane protein that reside within the lipid bilayer tend to have hydrophobic character. Amino acid residues in these transmembrane domains form wonder walls interactions with the fatty acyl chains of the bilayer which seals the protein into the lipid wall of the membrane. As a result, the permeability barrier of the membrane is preserved and the protein is brought into direct contact with surrounding lipid molecules. Lipid molecules that are closely associated with the membrane protein can play an important role in the activity of the protein. Although the degree to which a particular protein requires specific interactions with a particular lipid molecules remain unclear. Those portions of an integral membrane protein that project into either the cytoplasm or extracellular space tend to be more like the globular proteins. These non-embedded domains tend to have hydrophilic surfaces that interact with water soluble substances like low molecular weight substrates, hormones and other proteins at the edge of the membrane. Transmembrane proteins extend through the lipid bilayer as a single helix for example glycophorin or multiple helices or as barrels for example porin with a part of their mass on either side of the membrane. When the polypeptide crosses the membrane only once it's described as single pass transmembrane for example glycophorin protein of human RBCs and when it crosses several times it's called a multi-pass transmembrane protein for example band 3 protein of human RBCs. Peripheral proteins. Peripheral membrane proteins are located entirely outside of the lipid bilayer on either the cytoplasmic or extracellular side yet are associated with the surface of the membrane by non-covalent bonds. Peripheral proteins are associated with the membrane by weak electrostatic bonds. In actual fact, the distinction between integral and peripheral protein is blurred because many integral membrane proteins consist of several polypeptides, some that penetrate the lipid bilayer and others that remain on the periphery. The best studied peripheral proteins are located on the internal surface of the plasma membrane where they form a fibril network that acts as membrane skeleton. These proteins provide mechanical support for the membrane and function as anchor for integral membrane protein. Other peripheral proteins on the internal plasma membrane surface function as enzymes specialized coat or factors that transmit transmembrane signals. Example of peripheral protein include band 1 and second polypeptide chains of the spectrum polymers are located along the inner surface of the membrane. They are thought to be close to glycopeptides 
molecular weight values of band first and second are between 225000 and 250000 they are very similar to the polypeptide of the muscle protein myosin band 4 located on the inner side of the membrane and might be associated with band 3 polypeptide band 5 located near the spectrum polypeptide believed to be the actin or actin like molecular weight is about 45000 band 6 it has been identified as the monomeric form of the enzyme glycerol aldehyde 3 phosphate dehydrogenase it may be located near the band 3 polypeptide lipid anchored proteins located outside the lipid bilayer on either the extracellular or cytoplasmic surface but are covalently linked to a lipid molecule that is situated within the bilayer numerous proteins present on the external face of the plasma membrane are bound to the membrane by small complex oligosaccharide linked to a molecule of phosphatidylinositol that is embedded in the outer leaflet of the lipid bilayer peripheral membrane proteins containing this type of glycosyl phosphatidylinositol linkage are called gpi anchored proteins phospholipids the normal cellular scrappy protein prpc is a gpi linked molecule as are various receptors enzymes and cell adhesion proteins membrane carbohydrates the plasma membranes of eukaryotic cells also contain carbohydrate depending on the species and cell type the carbohydrate content of the plasma membrane ranges between 2 and 10% by weight more than 90% of membrane's carbohydrate is covalently linked to proteins to form glycoproteins the remaining carbohydrate is covalently linked to the lipids to form glycolipids all of the carbohydrate of the plasma membrane faces outwards into the extracellular space the carbohydrate of internal cellular membranes also faces away from the cytosol the addition of carbohydrate or glycosylation is the most complex modification the carbohydrate of glycoproteins is present as short branched hydrophilic oligosaccharides typically having fewer than about 15 sugars per chain the oligosaccharides attached to the membrane proteins and lipids can display considerable variability in composition and structure oligosaccharides may be attached to several different amino acids by two major types of linkages These carbohydrate projections play an important role in mediating the interactions of a cell with its environment and sorting of membrane proteins to different cellular compartments. Dear students, now moving on to another objective that is fluid mosaic model. The fluid mosaic model is used to describe the interactions of lipids and proteins in biological membranes. This model essentially proclaims the concept of lateral diffusion, stating that proteins can freely move about within a membrane and that such membranes are considered to be effectively two-dimensional. The fluid mosaic model of biological membranes is always fluctuating and adjusting. In 1972 the fluid mosaic model was introduced by S Jonathan Singer and Gert Nicolson Fluid mosaic model of membranes states that membrane components are free to diffuse in the plane of the membrane some of the membrane proteins are restricted to specific regions of the membrane by interactions with cytoskeleton proteins so although many phospholipids and membrane proteins can move literally within a leaflet they do not flip flop from one leaflet of the bilayer to the other flip flop of the phospholipids is very rare the inner and the outer leaflets of the membrane may be made up of different phospholipids membrane fluidity refers to the movement of membrane phospholipids within the plane of the membrane a decrease in fluidity is associated with decreased transport rates The length of the fatty acid side chains also affects fluidity. The phospholipids with the long hydrocarbon chains have increased hydrophobic interactions with neighboring lipids. 
and thus decreased membrane fluidity. Some organisms can alter membrane fluidity in a response to temperature stress by changing the length and degree of saturation of fatty acids present in membrane phospholipids. Cholesterol also influences membrane fluidity. The effects of cholesterol on membrane fluidity are complicated and depend on factors such as the ratio of saturated to unsaturated fatty acids in the membrane. The cholesterol also prevents packing of saturated fatty acids thus increasing fluidity. Proposed by S.J. Singer and Gerth Nicholson in 1972, the fluid mosaic model provides a reasonable structure and the image of the biological membranes in general. One of the most important features of this model is the idea that the phospholipid bilayer is fluid. The phospholipid molecule is free to move laterally relative to the lateral movement of the phospholipid molecules. There is a very little exchange between the two halves of the bilayer. This minimal exchange or flip-flop action allows asymmetric distribution of phospholipids. This asymmetry is an important feature of membranes. Membrane surfaces exhibit asymmetry. In other words, they have different characteristics on the two sides. These structural differences support the functional differences of the inner and outer sides of the membrane. For example, one of the most important functions of the outer surface of the membrane lies in its interaction and communication with other cells. This is often achieved by sugar molecules almost exclusively found on the outer surface that acts as distinguishing markers for the cell. The interior on the other hand serves different functions and therefore has a different composition. In this model, the membrane is a mosaic of proteins embedded in a fluid phospholipid bilayer. The hydrophilic portions of the phospholipids and proteins are maximally exposed to aqueous interface. This feature ensures membrane stability. The fluidity of the molecule is affected by several factors. These include the type of lipid found in the membrane and the degree of unsaturation in the fatty acid chains of the membrane lipids. The presence of cis double bond introduces a kink into the fatty acid chain which affects the packing of the phospholipid bilayer. The kink prevents the phospholipid molecules from being packed together too tightly and thus contributes to the membrane fluidity. It is important to understand that in this model both the membrane lipids and the embedded proteins are free to move. They may be mobile or fluid. Dear students, moving on to the next part that is membrane fluidity. Membrane fluidity refers to the viscosity of the lipid bilayer of a cell membrane or a synthetic lipid membrane. Lipid packing can influence the fluidity of the membrane. Viscosity of the membrane can affect the rotation and diffusion of the proteins and other biomolecules within the membrane, thereby affecting the functions of these molecules. Here are multiple factors that lead to membrane fluidity. First, the mosaic characteristics of the membrane helps the plasma membrane remain fluid. The integral proteins and lipids exist in the membrane as separate but loosely attached molecules. The membrane is not like a balloon that can expand and contract, rather it is fairly rigid and can burst if penetrated or if a cell takes in too much water. However, because of its mosaic nature, a very fine needle can easily penetrate a plasma membrane without causing it to burst. The membrane will flow and self-seal when the needle is extracted. Second factor that leads to fluidity is the nature of the phospholipids themselves. In their saturated form, the fatty acids in phospholipid tails are saturated with bound hydrogen atoms. There are no double bonds between adjacent carbon atoms. This results in tails that are relatively straight. In contrast, unsaturated fatty acids do not contain a maximal number of hydrogen atoms although they do contain some double bonds between adjacent carbon atoms. 
a double bond results in a band of approximately 30 degree in the string of carbons thus if saturated fatty acids with their straight tails are compressed by decreasing temperatures they press in on each other making a dense and fairly ridged membrane if unsaturated fatty acids are compressed the kinks in their tail elbow adjacent phospholipid molecules away maintaining some space between the phospholipid molecules this elbow room helps to maintain fluidity in the membrane at temperatures at which membranes with saturated fatty acid tails in their phospholipids would freeze or solidify the relative fluidity of the membrane is particularly important in a cold environment a cold environment tends to compress membranes composed largely of saturated fatty acids making them less fluid and more susceptible to rupturing many organism for example fish are capable of adapting to cold environments by changing the proportion of unsaturated fatty acids in their membranes in a response to the lowering of the temperature in animals the third factor that keeps the membrane fluid is cholesterol it lies alongside the phospholipid in the membrane and tends to dampen the effects of temperature on the membrane thus cholesterol functions as a buffer preventing lower temperatures from inhibiting fluidity and preventing higher temperatures from increasing fluidity too much cholesterol extends in both directions the range of temperature in which the membrane is appropriately fluid and consequently functional cholesterol also serves other functions such as organizing clusters of transmembrane proteins into lipid rafts bilayers and monolayers can be made artificially in such cases one can still speak of membrane fluidity these membranes are supported by a flat surface for example the bottom of a box the fluidity of these membranes can be controlled by lateral pressure applied for example by the side walls of a box dear students now we will discuss the importance and control of fluidity fluidity is important for many reasons it allows membrane proteins rapidly in the plane of bilayer it permits membrane lipids and proteins to diffuse from sites where they are inserted into bilayer after their synthesis it enables membranes to fuse with one another and mix their molecules it ensures that membrane molecules are distributed evenly between daughter cells when a cell divides control of fluidity the fluidity of membranes determines the extent to which molecules can be transported and signals can be transducted through the membrane membrane fluidity is a function of its fatty acid and cholesterol content fatty acid chains may be ordered and rigid or disordered and fluid which affects the fluidity of the membrane in which they are contained long fatty acid chains are able to form stronger intermolecular interactions which restrict fluidity bands and kinks in the fatty acid chains formed as a result of unsaturated cis and trans double bonds may interfere with intermolecular interactions which promote fluidity membrane fluidity can therefore be controlled by varying the number of double bonds and the length of fatty acid chains meanwhile the presence of bulky cholesterol molecules within the membrane restricts fluidity cholesterol is the key regulator of membrane fluidity in animals it's able to interact with and form specific complexes with phospholipids that are called lipid rafts that concentrate in specific regions of the membranes lipid rafts result in a moderation of membrane fluidity which cause the membranes to be less fluid while also making them less vulnerable to phase transitions cholesterol is comprised of a steroid with an hydroxy group conjugated at one end and a hydrocarbon chain at the other the rings of the steroid and the hydrocarbon chain are able to insert themselves into the phospholipid bilayer of the membrane and participate in hydrophobic interactions while the polar hydroxy group 
interacts with the polar head groups of the surrounding phospholipids dear students moving on the next part is experimental demonstration of membrane fluidity the fluid mosaic model was originally proposed by s jonathan singer and gert nicolson in 1972 Their idea of this model was to show and describe the general structure of a biological membrane. Biological membrane is composed of a lipid bilayer that's essentially a two-dimensional solution composed of lipids and proteins. The lipid bilayer functions as both a solvent for integral proteins as well as permeability barrier, freeze fracture and electron micrographs. One aspect of the fluid mosaic model is that Membrane proteins are randomly distributed throughout the plane of the membrane due to their mobility lateral diffusion this was verified using electron microscopy to view lipid bilayers cleaved by freeze fracture freeze fracture along with metal shadowing and imaging via electron microscopy is a technique that can be used to visualize membrane structure and protein distribution first a cell is rapidly frozen in liquid nitrogen then it's cleaved along the fracture plane that splits the lipid bilayer separation along this plane exposes the proteins embedded in the membrane after fracture the two sections are coated shadowed with a heavy metal like platinum ast is used next to dissolve the organic material resulting in a replica of the surfaces of the sample the replicas are then viewed with an electron microscope the micrographs show bumps on the surface of the sample which actually are transmembrane proteins since the surfaces of the samples halves correspond to the inner face of the phospholipid bilayer this confirm that membrane proteins are randomly dispersed throughout the phospholipid bilayer and that there are integral transmembrane proteins that span the entire membrane fire and adidin experiment in 1970 fire and adidin labeled selectively the species specific proteins of human and mouse cells and then fused these cells of the two species to make heterokaryon after incubating the heterokaryon for 30 to 35 minutes at 37 degree centigrade human and mouse proteins in these heterokaryons were seen intermixing as demonstrated by using specific antibodies so that human and mouse proteins become randomly distributed suggesting that membrane proteins are mobile in the plane of the membrane fluorescence recovery after photo bleaching this technique has been used for measuring rates of lateral diffusion of proteins lateral diffusion refers to the lateral movement of lipids and proteins found in the membrane membrane lipids and proteins are generally free to move laterally if they are not restricted by certain interactions lateral diffusion is a fairly quick and spontaneous process lateral diffusion can be tracked by a process called fluorescence recovery after photo bleaching This process is available because the use of fluorescence labeling allows the tracking of the molecules. The cell surface will be labeled first with a chromophore and then analyzed under fluorescence microscope on one section illuminated area. On this specific site the fluorescent molecules are destroyed by bleaching them use of laser and watching if they leave or enter the illuminated area if the molecules are mobile it has two different states bleached or unbleached if the molecule is leaving the illuminated area this means that the molecule is bleached if the molecule is entering the illuminated area this means that the molecule are unbleached the unbleached molecules help to increase the fluorescence intensity Lateral diffusion can also be measured by a complementary strategy known as fluorescence loss in photo bleaching. In this technique a small area is continuously bleached and the fluorescent proteins are bleached as they diffuse into it. Eventually the number of fluorescent proteins will decrease and will result in all bleached proteins. From both frap and flip we can calculate the diffusion coefficient from the bleached proteins electron spin resonance spectroscopy in 1970s 
evidence also became available to suggest that not only proteins but individual lipid molecules are also able to diffuse freely within the lipid bilayer. This was demonstrated in synthetic as well as isolated biological membranes obtained from mycoplasma, bacteria and red blood cells. The motion of individual lipid molecules could be measured by sipin labeling its polar head group with the help of groups like nitroxyl group containing unpaired electron. The sipin of unpaired electron creates a paramagnetic signal that can be detected by electron sipin resonance spectroscopy. The motion and orientation of a sipin labeled lipid can be deduced from ESR spectrum. These studies involving spin labeling followed by ESR spectroscopy suggested that phospholipid molecules rarely migrate from the monolayer on one side to the monolayer on the other side, a phenomena described as flip-flop transverse diffusion. The lipid molecules can also rotate or readily exchange places within the same monolayer. Dear student, now let's have a brief idea about membrane asymmetry. The cell membrane tends to have different composition on one side of the membrane than on the other side of the membrane. The differences can be caused by the different ratios or types of amphipathic lipid-based molecules, the different positioning of the proteins facing in or facing out, or the fixed orientations of the proteins spanning the membrane. Additionally, the there are different enzymatic activities in the outer and inner membrane surfaces. The reason the cell membrane is asymmetric is because when the proteins are synthesized by the pre-existing membranes, they are inserted into the membrane in an asymmetric manner. The asymmetry of the cell membrane allows the membrane to be rigid and allows the cell to have a different intracellular environment from the existing extracellular environment. Additionally, the cell membrane's phospholipids are distributed asymmetrically across the lipid bilayer in a phenomenon called membrane phospholipid asymmetry. The outer monolayer contained phospholipids with choline in their polar head group such as phosphotidylcholine and sphingomyelin. Conversely, inner monolayer phospholipids were those with the terminal primary amino group namely phosphotidylserine and phosphotidylethanolamine. The phosphotidyl ionostol is also located on the cytosolic side of the bilayer. Cholesterol is distributed evenly throughout the two monolayers. Although most phospholipids are neutral at a physiological pH, phosphotidylserine and phosphotidylinostol have a net negative charge at physiological pH being present predominantly in the inner leaflet. These two lipids generate a significant difference in charge between the two leaflets of the lipid bilayer. This generates a functionally relevant asymmetry in the membrane. In particular, membrane lipid asymmetry is important for signal transduction. Phosphotidylserine is a binding partner for signaling proteins such as protein kinase C. However, the appearance of phosphotidylserine on the outer leaflet of the cell membrane is an indication of a loss of membrane integrity. Extracellular expression of phosphotidylserine targets the cell for engulfment by macrophages and is widely used as a diagnostic marker for apoptosis. Maintaining membrane lipid asymmetry is therefore highly important for cell homeostasis. With this, we come to the end of today's program. Thank you for watching.